Four years ago, Elgu released the original Elgu Saturn IV, and it blew my mind. Ever since then, they've been further iterating and improving on that original design, and now we have the brand new Elgu Saturn IV and the Saturn IV Ultra, and I truly believe the Saturn IV Ultra is the easiest resin 3D printer that I have ever worked with. There are so many amazing features packed in this 3D printer. Is it perfect? No, but it's pretty darn close and it's gonna be the new go-to resin 3D printer that I recommend for anybody that's looking to get started with resin 3D printing just because of how easy it is to work with. I literally have a massive list of features for us to get through. So the first one being is this flip top lid design that's been added to the Saturn IV and the Saturn IV Ultra. It allows you to flip this back. You no longer have to lift it off and put it back on. It also is bolted in place. So if you wanted to completely remove it, that's an option for you, but you're definitely gonna need a little bit more room vertically as well as behind it to account for the flip top there. And it has a 10 inch 12K mono screen display for some crispy looking detailed prints. And it has a build volume of 218.8 by 122.8 by 222 millimeters vertically, which is actually slightly shorter than the previous Saturn III. However, it has a chunkier build plate because it now has auto bed leveling. That's right, no bed leveling whatsoever. You just have this clip in lever here. You put it in place, start up your print, and it's gonna automatically process us and level that for you. I'm also excited to see that that ball joint design or even the others have just been completely removed and now you just take your build plate and slide it back in and clamp it into place. Now, over using this for the past few weeks, I did have an issue where this started to get really tight and I reached out to Elegoo about it. They just said add a little bit of lubricant to it and it's now popping in and out very smoothly. Also, I had a number of people asking if this would fit inside of the Elegoo wash and cure station. It technically does, but the top of the build plate here will not get past the outer rim of this plastic container. Also, another thing that you definitely do not wanna do is completely submerge this into liquid because this top portion is hollow and it can fill up with liquid. If that does happen, you can just squeeze down on the build plate to release any of the liquid that might be trapped inside. Another really big addition and advancement for the Saturn III Ultra is this tilting vat mechanism. This is gonna allow your vat to dip down and back up with each layer of your print. So instead of the build plate lifting up and then coming back down or lifting up and pausing and coming back down, you now have this tilting mechanism, which should in theory allow your prints to separate more easily from the FEP sheet during the printing process, allowing you to print even faster than you normally can. And I can confirm out of the box, this thing prints pretty fast. I'll give you some print comparisons here in just a few minutes. Now to help support the tilting vat mechanism to make sure that you're not spilling resin down into the printer after your print has finished, they included this drip tray, or as Fox Hammer says, it's a bib that just slides directly into place. It locks in to make sure that you're not dripping resin all over your printer. This is a great addition. Make sure you double check your packaging that you don't throw this out by accident. The other big addition on the Saturn IV Ultra is the AI assisted camera. This allows you to not only remotely monitor your prints, but also create time lapses of your resin 3D prints that you can view after your print is completed. But the AI camera will also assist in helping detect if your print is failing or something is going wrong with your print. Now, I haven't personally had any print failures or anything like that that I've been able to test with the AI camera just yet, so I'll be excited to test that out when it happens, but I can confirm that I can access that camera remotely from viewing my prints when I'm uh, in the other room here or viewing my time lapses directly from within Chi2 Box Free. Now, Lychee Slicer is also supported with the Saturn IV Ultra, and I did confirm that they are working on an update to their slicer that will work with that camera as well. Another one that I'm a big fan of that the Saturn III Ultra had is the Wi-Fi support. So on the side of the machine here, you have access to the USB port, your power switch, uh, the power plug, as well as the Wi-Fi adapter, which is gonna be in that back corner of the printer. They've also redesigned the VAT, and I'm very excited to see that they've added two different pour spout options on both sides of the VAT. Thank you, I've been complaining about this for years. I'm happy that you're listening here. And the interesting design here is that it's sort of like a circular pattern there, and it really does help cut down on the amount of extra spillage that can occur when pouring resin out of your vat. Also, the FEP sheet in here is, I think it's just an NFEP sheet. It's not that new one that they were using with the 
Saturn 3s that I think people were had mixed feelings about. There's also now a vertical touchscreen display on the front of the machine. Yeah, it works just fine. However, I will say it is a little cramped when trying to put in the password for your Wi-Fi network. Other than that, I've had no issues with it. What is really cool is that it displays every time that you start up the machine, it will run through a calibration check to make sure that everything is working properly on the printer. And it actually has sensors built into the machine. So it will warn you to not touch the machine or mess with it while it's running its checks because it can detect things like if there's enough resin in the vat before you start your print or if there's actual debris or a failed print directly in the vat before you start your next print. Now, a perfect example of this is Loyal Moses had the Saturn IV Ultra, had a print, part of the supports failed off, maybe when he was removing it, I don't know, and it was inside the vat. So when he started his next print, it detected something was in there and stopped the print from occurring and he was able to clean that out. Unfortunately, it did puncture his FEP sheet, but it did prevent a massive you know, mess that could have been made or cured resin all over the screen during a print process. And another awesome thing is since it's network connected, it has automatic firmware updates that have been provided to the machine. And I've received four updates so far since working with this over the past handful of weeks. Now, Elegoo, I do wish you had some sort of a firmware update page that listed what actually changed with these updates. Another great new feature that's not being advertised, and I don't know why, is they have an exposure tester built directly into the printer. So you can take your favorite exposure testing print file, mine's the cones of calibration and this one from Denny's Wang, and put it in each of the four corners of the printer, slice that, load it up onto the printer, then you can run the exposure tester and set the different exposure setting options that you'd like to test out. This actually works really well and I'm excited to play with this even more. Another big factor that makes this the easiest resin 3D printer that I've ever worked with is there are two speed settings that you have to play around with here on the printer. There's a slow option and a fast option. I'd recommend the fast option, but what's really crazy about this is when you're slicing up your files, basically all you have to worry about now is your bottom exposure and your normal exposure. You don't have to worry about any of the plethora of other settings that you typically have to deal with with resin 3D printing. This just makes it so much simpler, especially with that exposure testing setting, because you can really dial in your prints and choose if you want it to print really fast or print slow. I do wish there was a third speed option, like a Vroom speed option, because I have a feeling this thing can go even faster. And yes, I do have some time comparisons of prints that I'll be sharing with you guys here in just a few minutes. And I know one of the big questions is, does this have a heater? And no, it does not have a heater built into it. There is an additional heater that you can purchase from Elegoo for $50 and add directly to this printer that also works with a variety of other 3D printers and not just Elegoo, which is pretty cool. So I'll be looking forward to trying that out once I get my hands on it. But like a lot of you, I do wish a heater was directly built into the machine. And then the last feature I wanted to mention is the power loss resume. So unlike any other resin 3D printer that I've ever had, this actually has power resume functionality. So if you lose power, it will resume the print. I still need to test this out a bit more. I've only ran one test with it so far. I mean, it resumed, it didn't turn out the best. Uh, some of the supports failed. I mean, the print completed, but it, it's gonna be a little bit of a mixed bag, it seems. And my Saturn IV literally just arrived and I haven't had a chance to do anything with it other than getting it out of the box. I'll be doing a separate video entirely on this in the next few weeks. But the Saturn IV Ultra comes in at $399. The Saturn IV comes in at $299. Both impressive prices for these resin 3D printers. And there are differences between the Saturn IV and the Saturn IV Ultra. The Saturn IV does not have the tilting vat. It doesn't have a camera, it doesn't have Wi-Fi, and it doesn't have the drip tray. And because it doesn't have the tilting vat, in theory, it's gonna print slightly slower than what I'm seeing with the Saturn IV Ultra. Also, as I'm lifting this up, uh, one thing that I can't believe Elegoo didn't do is like there's no, there's no lever, there's no handle on these. So I'm thinking about 3D designing some sort of a handle that will go and snap into the covers of these so that you can more easily lift them up. At the moment, you kind of have to pinch the side and pull up the top to get the top to flip up. Also, I really do like the green acrylic look on the Saturn IV. And the most important thing is, how the heck do these prints look? Well, I'm happy to say that it's printing extremely fast and the prints are looking really good. The first thing I went off and printed are these miniatures by Loot Studios. This took one hour and 32 minutes to print. I printed everything that I'm gonna be showing you here today at 0.05 layer height. And yeah, these prints are looking really clean. And at this point, this is exactly what I'm expecting from these Saturn 3D printers from Elegoo. And you might know I'm a huge 
huge fan of Photosmet and 3D printing his bus over on my resin 3D printers. And so I had to fire up these two busts here. The first is Dave Batista from Dune, and we have a Hellboy bust. These both printed in just under three hours with that fast setting. And again, the detail on these is so nice and clean. I'm extremely happy with how these prints turned out. Now, I did want to see how these prints would compare to the Saturn 3 Ultra, just in terms of the print quality, as well as the print time it takes between the two speed settings that I have here on the Saturn 4 Ultra. So again, using the exact same bottom and normal exposure settings between the two 3D printers, obviously the lift settings are gonna differ on the Saturn 3 because I can't even control those here. I just have a fast or slow option. The fast option, again, printed in just under three hours for the two bus on the Saturn 4 Ultra. And when I printed them using the slow function, it took exactly four hours to print these two bus on the Saturn 4 Ultra. And using the Saturn 3 Ultra with just some basic lift settings, this took four hours and 48 minutes to print these two bus. And when I use my Vroom settings that I took forever to dial in on the Saturn IV Ultra, it took three hours and 15 minutes to print these two busts. Now, I'm not really seeing any massive differences in print quality between the two machines. However, the actual setup process and dialing in my resin was completely different. On the Saturn IV Ultra, it is such a wildly simpler process of just setting my exposure setting and hitting print. Versus the Saturn III Ultra, I ended up spending so much time dialing in my Vroom settings previously for this rapid resin to get this to print as fast as possible. I then printed this amazing Venom bust by Harpercraft Hall that took four hours and 26 minutes. Now, I still need to remove some of the supports on this and I haven't cured it yet, which is why I'm still wearing gloves, but the details look so good on this and it's one of these prints that I definitely want to look at trying to get painted and on display. It just turned out beautiful. I wanted to then try and print something a little bit larger, so I found this tree skull by The Lantern Lore and this took just under six hours to print. Now I did have a slight issue with this where we can see that the print, it looks like it had like a, a bit of a layer shift or something like that. And I think I just didn't have enough supports in place for this model. So I went back and reprinted it a second time. You'd be surprised with a little bit more supports dude. This turned out so good. This turned out so good. I wanna use this as an actual planter and put a plant in here. It's just a really cool skull design that you can find over on Thangs within the Lantern Lores memory membership area. This is such a wildly cool detailed print. Highly recommend this one. Now, I also wanted to test out the power loss resume functionality. So I started up this print from Loot Studios. I printed one properly as sort of the, the test print there. And then the second attempt at printing it, I ended up cutting the power to the machine and then turning it back on to see what would happen. So it lifted the build plate all the way up and then tried lifting it all the way back into the vat before starting up the print again. The print completed, however, some of the supports looked like they actually failed. And when I cleaned up the print, I'm not actually seeing really any major issues issues with the print itself. However, if you look really closely, I can see a fine line where it looked like it resumed the print process. So is this perfect? No, but it's a really great option for if you have a big print that you have been working on and you don't want to completely scrap the entire thing, you can test resuming it and then uh, let it print or potentially stop it depending on how the results are looking from your print resume. And again, I think this is going to be my new go-to resin 3D printer to recommend to anybody that's looking to get started with resin 3D printing. It's just so easy to work with the, with the auto bed leveling. With the tilt vat mechanism there, you literally just have those two settings that you ever have to worry about, the bottom exposure and the normal exposure. Everything else is taken care of you. It just simplifies that process by so much. Also, the addition of a drip tray, you'd be surprised at how non-messy that makes working with resin because you're not spilling resin over the front of your build plate or your printer every time that you take the build plate off of the actual machine. And keep in mind, this is a sponsored video by Elgu. It's not meant to be a review of this unit. Please watch some other videos on this, but it is an absolute absolutely fantastic resin 3D printer. And I would definitely recommend it for anybody, that, again, that's looking to get started with resin 3D printing, or if you're just looking to upgrade to a much easier process of working with the resin 3D printer. It's not perfect. Like a lot of other folks out there, I do wish this had a heater built in. It's nice that there is a heater add-on option that you can add to the printer, but I do wish it was built in. Also, the smaller build volume, uh, I, I do wish it was either larger or the same size as the original Saturn, but it's maybe the trade-off here with the auto bed leveling, which is 
oh so nice and the sensor is built into it to account for that. Also, I want to say a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters for your continued support. If you're interested in things like my Resin 3D printer settings, like the settings that I used for the Saturn 4 Ultra, you can find those over in my Patreon. And let me know what you all think about the Saturn 4 Ultra and the tilting that, the AI camera, the auto bed leveling. There were so many features packed into this new resin 3D printer. And again, I'll have a video here on the Saturn 4 in the next few weeks. Hey, thanks again for watching all. I'll see you next time.